Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be looking at MySQL database exploitation with Metasploit. So we've looked at how to use Metasploit, we've gone through everything we need to know about the Metasploit console, we've looked at how to perform a basic exploit, we've looked at uh, Armitage which is the graphical user interface for Metasploit and now it's time to look at one of the fundamentals of exploitation which is actually exploiting a working database. Now luckily for us Metasploitable 2 does come with a, a MySQL server which is perfect for practicing and understanding how everything just comes together in terms of exploiting a database. Alright so the most important thing to understand here is now everything comes together all the sections that we've learned so far all come together really really well. So now we're going to be performing some basic information gathering about a target we done here, I've performed an nmap scan with Zenmap, if I just open that up on our target. So again, we're using Metasploitable 2 because it does come with a MySQL uh, database server and it's much better than going outside or out of your network and doing it illegally or actually exploiting a database that belongs to someone uh, whom you have no permission, you know, in doing it for. So that is also uh, something I would like to pass out. Please make sure that you are doing this in your virtual lab because you are still not competent enough to go into a real working network and to exploit or to actually perform penetration testing on working databases. Right, so it's very, very important that you understand that. So again, uh, by default, if we just go to the scan results and we go into the ports here that uh, it was able to find, uh, one of them that we'll find here is the MySQL database uh, port which is 3306 uh, so you can see by default it's running MySQL and the MySQL service version is right here. Now you can go ahead and look for exploits for this service version but uh, there again this might not be a viable option alright if you've performed your vulnerability analysis it may not be an actual uh, vulnerability that you can exploit. Now what we're going to be using is we're going to be using a brute force attack uh, with Metasploit, with the, the Metasploit console more specifically, we will be trying to brute force the login credentials. Now, since we haven't looked at password section of the course, we do not know yet how to create a word list or a password list in which we can use to perform the brute force attack using default usernames and password combinations. So by default, I'm just going to be using a singular uh, username, which, uh, as I said, is used by default on MySQL databases, which is the root username, all right? So the username is actually root. Now by default, Metasploitable2 uh, does not have a password for the MySQL database. So it is essentially a blank password. Now I know you might be thinking to yourself, well, why exactly are we exploiting this uh, if you, you know the, the credentials don't actually exist? Well, in theory, if you use the same method, you can actually exploit a real working database if you had created a word list or a password list, which we'll be looking at in the password section of the course. All right, so let's get started. Now, as we know, the by default, the IP address for uh, the Metasploitable 2 virtual machine is 192.168.1.106. Yours might be different on your network. All right, so we're going to open up the Metasploit console and now we have to actually use the search command because as I said, these all come together really well. And this is where you'll find all of these sections in the course coming down, you know, really, really well. So essentially now we have to search for the MySQL module. All right, so search for MySQL. All right, and we're going to hit search. So it's going to start the database and just give that a few seconds to bring out the results. There we are. Now you might be asking, well, what exactly, what module here are we using? Well, the most important one that we're going to be using is the login module here, all right? So it's the auxiliary scanner uh, and the MySQL login module. So by default, it is a scanner module. It's not an actual exploit, but it does give you the option. Uh, you know, we're going to be performing brute force attacks with it. So it is in theory an exploitation, but it does not actually carry out the exploitation for you in the sense that it does not log you into the MySQL server. It uh, rather gets the credentials so that you can do it for yourself. All right. So that is the difference there. So we're just going to copy it. And now you might be asking, how do we get to using this? So all you have to do is hit use and we paste that in here, or you can use the control plus shift plus V key on your keyboard and it will paste it in there by default, or you can right click and paste it. And uh, we just hit enter. And by default, it'll tell you, yes, you're using the auxiliary, uh, more specifically the scanner and the MySQL login scanner. All right, so now what we do, let's clear this up. So we have a great idea of what's going on and we use the show options command. All right, so show options. And now you might be asking, well, what do we need to change here? Well, there's a few things you need to change here. One of the most important things that you need to change, the username, the default username. As I said, we're going to be using a default username, which in this case you can specify here. 
all right so a specific username to authenticate as the description so we're going to say set username all right and i can just auto complete that and i'm going to say set the username as root all right so that is the default username that is used on my sql databases now in the real world obviously it's going to be changed but what you would do is you'd use a user you'd use a password file which we'll be looking at generating and you would use a user file that contains usernames and obviously the password file contains passwords which you can then brute force against and then uh, depending on your success rate you can either get the credentials or if the credentials do not exist within the word list or the password list then uh, the uh, the exploitation of the brute force attack fails but in this case we're going to set the default username as root and i'm going to hit enter so yes we do we have set that now we need to set we need to look uh, and set the r host which is the most important as well because we need to set the ip address so our host as you can see that exists right here so our hosts all right so our hosts and that is 192.168.1.106 and i'm going to hit enter and it's going to set the r host fantastic now we need to set uh, the blank passwords because we do not have uh, any passwords that we want to specify and we do not have a password list so as you can see it's going to try blank passwords for all the users now again as i said uh, by default in a real world this is not going to be the case but in that case you would have a password list or a password file that you can specify okay so we're going to say set a uh, blank we're going to say set blank passwords and we're going to set that to a value now now that is very very important we're going to set it to a value here which in this case the current setting as you can see is false so we're going to change it to true because we are you know using blank passwords so once we hit that uh, we've essentially set the, the default username as root we have set the r hosts we have actually uh, you know set the value of the blank passwords to true so it's uh, going to use blank passwords and now you might be asking what do we do well it's really very simple we just hit run or we can hit exploit all right so if we hit exploit let's see what we get all right so i'm just going to hit exploit and it's going to start the process and as you can see it's already got the result so uh, by default the username is root now again i specified the default one because as i said metasploitable 2 is you know designed to be vulnerable so now you might be asking well yeah we've got the username and we know the, the password is blank well how do we get access to the database well that can be done by going into a terminal a separate terminal and uh, we can just open that up here let me just minimize this and what we do now is we need to log into the database the mysql database on our host all right so that can be done by the mysql command so my sql and now we specify the username which in this case is root as we know it and since there's no password we do not have to specify a password uh, so now we specify our host which is 192.168.1.106 fantastic and we just hit enter and we should be into the mysql database fantastic so you might be asking or you still might be skeptical uh, and you might be asking yourself well how do i know this is the actual metasploitable database how do i know this is running on your local server well that's really simple all i have to do is i just have to show the databases so that can be done if you're familiar with uh, the mysql syntax that can be done by show databases so once i hit enter there you are as you can see you have the damn vulnerable web application metasploit mysql uh, OSAP, uh, your Tiki week. All right. So in the next video, we will be looking at client side attacks. We will be using the BEF for browser exploitation. So I'll be seeing you in the next video.